James is a famous blogger. Yes. He arrives at an abandoned haunted castle to film a video. Ooh. James hasn't even entered the house yet, but he has already spotted five weird things about this place and freaked out. Can you see them too? These footprints on the ground are too giant. It's winter, but this cherry tree is blooming. It should be the moon in the sky, not Saturn. Also, this black cat has four paws, but leaves footprints from only three. James walks around the castle and gets lost in the garden maze. But in a while, he arrives at the front doors. Can you guess which way brought James here? Here's the only way to cross the maze. Unfortunately, the doors are locked. James needs to enter a four-digit code. Can you find any clues? Take a closer look at the door. There are four stars painted on it. The first one has five rays, the second has four rays, the third one, nine, and finally, the fourth one has seven rays. Therefore, the correct code is 5497. James enters the castle. It's very dark. Suddenly, someone grabs his camera and runs away to the library. Oh, no. James follows the thief. In the library, he faces a werewolf, a vampire, and a lady ghost. James questions them all. The werewolf says, I only come here for magic books to find a way to become human again. I'm not involved in the robbery. The lady ghost says, Someone spilled cherry juice on my favorite dress. I spent an hour in the bathroom trying to clean it. I didn't see anything suspicious. And the vampire says, It's early evening now. I got up just a minute ago. Why would I need your camera anyway? <sighs> Who is lying? You cannot spill juice on a ghost. Therefore, she's lying. James enters another creepy room full of mirrors, but only one of them is fake. Can you help James find his real reflection? Only the second mirror shows the truth. Oh, yeah. James enters the toilet room, but all cabins are occupied. Can you spot a zombie among the visitors? The zombie is behind the left door. See the hands? They are greenish. Suddenly, James finds an invitation card for a party. The castle owner, Luna, is having a birthday. James enters the main hall and sees seven pretty witches sitting by the table. All look very similar, but each witch is wearing an outfit of a different color. It's very hard to tell who's the birthday lady, but after a couple of seconds, James approaches one of the witches, shakes her hand, and says, Thank you for inviting me over, Luna. How did he guess? Take a look at these gifts. Each witch brought a box wrapped in the color of her outfit. But the green box is absent because Luna is wearing the green dress. <laughs> Luna leads James to a company of four ghosts and says, Welcome, stranger. Meet my granny. Can you help James find out Luna's actual grandmother? It's the third ghost. She's wearing the same brooch as Luna. One of the witches, Zelda, likes James and wants to impress him. She shows him some pictures of her fabulous vacation, but James spots fake right away. How? Hmm. Take a look at the angle of the shadows in this picture. It's obvious that Zelda has photoshopped herself over this fancy beach view. Uh -huh. In the middle of the party, Luna gets a message from her boyfriend, Carl. He lives alone only 20 minutes away from the castle. Here's what he sends. Sorry for being late, honey. I'm still working. Luna yells, liar, and blocks him. Why? It's because of his selfie. There's a lipstick mark on the glass in the kitchen. Luna breaks up with Carl and uses a magic spell to teleport three handsome wizards to her dinner. When they arrive, 
Luna asks them just one question. Do you guys have a girlfriend? Hmm. Magnus replies, Lady, I work around the clock. I'm too busy for romance. Tristan says, Oh no, I've never had any serious relationships. Mm -hmm. Ambrose replies, Nah, I'm too picky. I'm still searching for the one. Mm. Two guys are lying. Can you guess who? Magnus, there's a romantic tattoo with a female name on his chest. And Tristan, he has a tan line around his ring finger. Therefore, he had been wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> James goes to the kitchen to help Luna with coffee. He spots three odd things right away. Ooh. Can you see them too? The candle flame painted on the canvas is moving. There's a zombie hiding on the shelf behind the jars. Oh. And also Luna puts salt in the coffee pot. <laughs> Luna comes back to the hall and sees that someone had scratched her favorite oil painting on the wall. She interrogates four suspects among her guests. Hmm. Magnus says, whoa, I haven't even noticed the painting. Sophia says, sorry, I was having a phone call. Zelda says, no worries, honey. I can paint you a new one better than this. And Glinda says, I was in the bathroom. I don't know who ruined the painting. Who is guilty? Glinda, her nail polish has the same color as the scratches on the painting. Luna takes James to the garden and turns him into stone. Can you find the enchanted James among these three statues? There shouldn't be any grass under a real statue. Meanwhile, James has only been a stone for a few minutes. Therefore, we need to choose the only statue with grass underneath. James asks Luna to let him go. She says, okay, but first, you should crack my riddle. If I had three watermelons and four oranges in one hand, and four watermelons and three oranges in the other hand, what would I have? Can you help James figure it out? To solve this riddle, we need to think literally. The correct answer is, she would have very large hands. James wakes up in a dusty basement. He wanders around and finds three doors, but each way is guarded by a creepy magical creature. A hungry vampire is hiding behind the first door, and a fire-breathing dragon is waiting behind the second door, and there's a giant mutant rat behind the third door. Can you help James choose the best option? James should choose the first door. Take a look at the window. It's already dawn, which means the vampire is sleeping. James gets out of the castle and walks home. Suddenly, he spots a suspicious guy with a huge bag nearby a luxurious mansion. Hmm. James decides to question the guy. He says it was his house, and he carried his old stuff to give it away for charity. James calls the police right away. Why? Take a look at the window. The glass is broken and the guy's coat is torn. Why would he need to leave his own house through the broken window? Therefore, he's probably a thief. Oh. Finally, James arrives home. He checks his emails and finds three letters from different witches. Linda offers him to study at her magic school. Zelda invites James to visit her villa in Antarctica. And Sophia invites him on a date. But only one of these emails isn't fake. Can you find it? Linda's email is just spam. She doesn't mention his name in the message, and it also contains a suspicious link. Zelda sends him a picture of her villa, but it's clearly not in Antarctica, so only Sophia's email is real. James agrees to go on a date. He arrives at the meeting point and faces not one Sophia, but five. Unfortunately, a wicked wizard had cloned her. He tells James, you only have one chance to choose the real Sophia. If you succeed, I'm gonna let her go. Can you help James? The first lady has gills, so she's probably fake. The second one's teeth are too sketchy. 
The fourth Sophia has two left hands, and the fifth one has lilac eyes, while the real Sophia's eyes are green. Therefore, James should choose the third lady. Carol was invited to a Halloween party in an abandoned house. Her friends asked if she was up for a challenge, and she said yes. Soon enough, she was locked inside a room. In this room, there was one door and three light switches next to it. Behind the door, there was an empty closet with nothing but a light bulb. Her task was to figure out which switch controlled the light bulb inside the closet. She could flip the switches however she wanted, but once she opened the door, she couldn't touch the switches anymore. Sometime later, she managed to get it right. How did Carol do it? Okay, let's go step by step. She flipped switch number one, then waited for a few minutes. Then she flipped it back to off and immediately flipped switch number two. Then she opened the door and checked the light. It was turned off. So she realized it wasn't switch number two that controlled the light. She decided to touch the bulb to test if it was hot or cold. If the bulb was cold, it would mean that switch number three controlled it, but the bulb was hot. So that meant that switch number one controlled it. Way to go, Carol! To get back to the party, Carol had to solve another riddle. There were two hourglasses in front of her. One hourglass measured seven minutes and the other measured four minutes. She needed to time nine minutes using both hourglasses. How could she do it? First, she turned over both hourglasses at the same time. By the time the four-minute hourglass was done, the other one still had three minutes left. Carol flipped the four-minute hourglass over again. By the time the seven-minute hourglass was empty, there was one minute left on the other hourglass. And by the time the four-minute hourglass emptied again, there was one minute's worth of sand in the bottom half of the seven-minute timer. She flipped it over again, so there was one minute's worth of sand in the top part of the hourglass. And when the seven-minute timer finally emptied again, nine minutes had passed in total. Phew! That took some work. Someone stole a rare diamond from Mrs. Monica Fraser's house. Mrs. Fraser claimed she'd walked into her bedroom one morning and found that the glass box in her dressing room had been broken and the diamond had been gone. She called a detective, who soon arrived at her place and asked some questions. Based on his inquiries, he gathered three suspects. Mrs. Fraser's gardener, Steve, had the key to the house. Her cousin Sophia was staying with her for the week, and the cleaning lady, Adeline, cleaned the house every day. Steve said he was on holiday that week, so he wasn't anywhere near the house when it had happened. Sophia said she didn't even know her cousin had a diamond hidden in her house. And Adeline said that she'd been cleaning the house at around 10 p.m. the previous night. Everything had seemed all right. Who stole the jewelry? It was the cleaning lady. It seems that right after she broke the glass and stole the diamond, she also wiped off the pieces of glass left on the floor. On a cold winter day, Jason woke up after a medical procedure. He was lying in bed when the doctor walked into his room, saying there were three women outside claiming to be his wife. All three of them wanted to see Jason, but only his wife was allowed to do so. Look at the women. Which one do you think is telling the truth? The woman wearing a white shirt is the only one that has a ring on her left finger. She's the wife. It was a lazy Sunday morning, and John was having breakfast in the kitchen. Suddenly, he heard glass shattering. He walked into the living room and saw that someone had just broken one of his windows. He was mad and decided to go outside to see if he could find the culprit. There were only three people in the street, so he talked to each of them. The first was one of his neighbor's children. He was coming back from his football practice, holding a ball in his hands. He said he'd been going home at the time of the incident. 
The second person was Stephen, John's neighbor and longtime friend. He was carrying a toolbox. The man said he decided to come home to fix John's window. The last person was Julio, a mailman. He was riding his bike, throwing newspapers on people's front lawns. He said it had been hours since he'd passed John's house. Soon enough, John figured out who had done it. How? It was the mailman. If you look at the lawn, the newspaper is lying on the grass beneath the window. He threw the newspaper towards the mailbox, but missed it, and it hit John's window. Whoops. It was a stormy night. Kate and her boyfriend stayed up late watching a soap opera. In the middle of it, there was a weather forecast. The weather lady said it would keep raining for two more days, but in 72 hours, it'd be bright and sunny. Kate turned to her boyfriend and said that the weather lady was wrong, and the girl was right. Why? Because in 72 hours, it will also be nighttime. So it can't possibly be bright and sunny. It was Amelia's dream to go skydiving, but she was afraid of heights. One day, her friend took her to fulfill her dream. Amelia jumped from an airplane without a parachute and didn't get hurt. How is that possible? The plane wasn't flying. It was still on the ground. Duh. Dave, an archaeologist, traveled to Egypt on a very special mission. He spent days excavating ruins hidden under the sand. And the only thing he found was a coin marked 10 BCE. When he showed it to his colleagues, they told him the coin was a fake. Why? Well, because the designation BCE didn't appear until after the beginning of our era. It was raining when Mrs. Moore called the police. She said someone had just bumped into her car and driven away. When the police arrived, the only person next to the place of the incident was a man fixing his tire. Mrs. Moore said that that was the car that had bumped into hers. However, the gentleman said that it couldn't be true because he'd been busy fixing his car the whole time. Can you tell who's lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain started just recently. If he'd been fixing his car this whole time, the ground underneath it would be dry. But look, it's wet. This means he's just arrived there and is actually the one responsible for the incident. Four friends decided to meet up for coffee one afternoon. Someone asked which one of them was the oldest, and they answered with a riddle. Mia is three times older than Anna. But three years ago, Anna was a year younger than Claudia is now. And Olivia is twice as old as Anna. So can you put the girls into order by age? The correct order is Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Claudia. Here's a quick one. What belongs to you, but others use it more often? Your name. Outside a fancy palace, two sentinels were guarding the main gate. They were standing, looking in different directions, one towards the west and the other towards the east. At some point, one of the sentinels asked the other, What are you smiling about? How could he know that his colleague was smiling? Well, despite the fact that they were looking in different directions, they weren't standing back to back. They were facing each other. Kevin was away on business and had to spend the night in a hotel. After a full day of meetings, he returned to his room to get some rest. He went to bed but couldn't fall asleep. After tossing and turning in bed for hours, he called someone. D, 
didn't say a word and then finally fell asleep. Who did Kevin call? And how could he finally fall asleep? He called the room next door as his neighbor was snoring very loudly. The ringing woke the neighbor up, the snoring stopped, and Kevin managed to doze off. You've just come back from a long vacation. There, you bought a new suitcase to store all the new things you got. But you don't remember the code. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone to help you decipher the code to open the lock. 682. One digit is right and in its place. 614. One digit is right but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are right but both are in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right, but in the wrong place. What's the three digit code? Zero, four, two. Erica works at the Railway Security Service. This morning, she received an emergency alert. There's a person with fake documents trying to escape to Canada by train. Erica and her colleagues found three suspects who look almost the same. Can you identify a criminal just by looking at one's passport? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. So this documents are fake. Bob is a college teacher. He invited his worst student, Dan, for a conversation. Bob wants to test the guy's logical thinking. He says, If you tell a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell the truth, I'll still expel you. What should the student say to stay in college? Bob should say, I'm telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox uh -oh. because it cannot be a lie or the truth. Nancy has 10 bowling balls. Her brother Josh decided to check her intelligence. So, he asked Nancy to place those 10 balls in 5 lines, such that each of the lines has exactly 4 balls on them. Can you help her accomplish this task? She should draw a 5-point star and place the 10 balls occupying the corners and the intersection points. Voila! 5 lines with 4 balls in each row. Kevin has been hitchhiking in a desert for hours. Finally, one driver stopped and said, I will give you a ride wherever you want, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Which letter can make the road larger? Can you help Kevin solve this task? The letter B can turn road into broad. Alex is a shepherd. He had 30 sheep, out of which all but 13 ran away. Can you calculate how many sheep Alex has now? He has 13 sheep. The phrase all but 13 ran away actually means that all except the 13 escaped. Take a look at these three prisoners. The first guy pushes the iron bars. The second guy shakes muscles with dumbbells. The third guy sits and reads a book. There's a picture hanging on the wall. Can you say for sure who's likely to escape? Take a closer look at the third guy. Can you see the sand under the painting? He must be digging a tunnel and covering it with a picture. So he's the one who wants to escape. All Becky's shoes are black, except two. Also, all Becky's shoes are red, except two. And all Becky's shoes are yellow, except two. Can you calculate how many shoes Becky has in general?
Just three, one of each color. Dr. Smith prescribed Dan expensive vitamins. He gave Dan two bottles labeled R and B. The pills are entirely identical. The doctor asked Dan to take one pill daily from the R bottle and one pill from the B bottle. He can't take more or less than that. One morning, Dan was taking out the pills. He took out one pill from the R bottle as usual, and then, by mistake, he took out two from the B bottle. Now Dan has no idea which pill is which. He can't just throw away the expensive pills. What would you suggest? Dan should cut each of the three pills in half and put each half in two piles. Now each of the two piles will contain half of pill R and two halves of pill B. Now, Dan should take one more pill from the R bottle, cut it into half, and put the two halves in two different piles. This way, we'll know that each pile will have two halves of pill R and two halves of pill B, or one complete R pill and one complete B pill. Dan can take one pile today and keep the second pile for tomorrow. I am red, but I smell like blue paint. What am I? Red paint. Timmy's mother has three sons. She named her first son April. The next one's name is May. Can you guess the youngest son's name? And the correct answer is... Timmy. Pretty obvious, huh? Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? The reflection in the mirrors doesn't match reality. What about this picture? Can you see anything odd? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this guy's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had big scratches, unless they're a zombie. The king of octopuses has sons who have six, seven, or eight legs. The one with seven legs always lies, but the one with either six or eight legs always tells the truth. On a certain night, four sons meet and chat. The blue octopus says, we have 28 legs altogether. The green one says, we have 27 legs altogether. The purple one says, we have 26 legs altogether. And the red octopus says, we have 25 legs altogether. Can you identify the color of the sun who's speaking the truth? The green sun is telling the truth. To prove it, let us first assume that one of them is telling the truth. Obviously, three of the four suns lie as they disagree with each other. Let's suppose that the blue octopus is telling the truth. In that case, he has either six or eight legs. And each of the other octopuses is lying, which means they have seven legs. In this case, the total number of legs will be six plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 27 legs, or eight plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 29 legs. But the blue octopus said that they have 28 legs altogether. Therefore, he lies. Now we can follow the same logic and check the remaining three suns and we'll find out that only the green octopus is telling the truth. I have an eye, but cannot see. I'm faster than any man alive, but have no limbs. What am I? The correct answer is hurricane. I know a word of letters three. Add two and there will be fewer. Can you guess the word? The correct answer is few. I have a beard without being a man. I'm green, but I'm not a lizard. I'm white, but I'm not snow. Who am I?
The correct answer is Leek. A wicked wizard has imprisoned Billy in his tower. Billy ran away from the wizard, but now he needs to choose between these three doors leading outside the tower. There's a toxic gas behind the first door. The second path is full of poisonous scorpions and snakes. And behind the third door, there's a pride of lions which haven't eaten for three years. Which way is the safest? The third one. The lions can't starve for three years and still be alive. Monica adores real estate. She used to spend $300,000 per house and acquired property worldwide. She realized that she had too many houses at one point. So, she started selling them at $30,000 per house. How is that possible if she was obviously losing money? Before selling her property, Monica used to be a billionaire. Since she started losing money, she became only a millionaire. I'm full of holes, but I still hold water. What am I? A sponge. Sarah's mother has two sons and one daughter. The son's names are Josh and John. What's the daughter's name? Sarah. You're in a room with three monkeys. One monkey has a banana, one has a stick, and one has nothing. Can you tell for sure who's the smartest primate in the room? You! The sun bakes me, the hand breaks me, the foot treads me, the mouth tastes me. What am I? The correct answer is grapes. Bobby participated in a brain teaser contest. The host blindfolded Bobby and gave him a basket with 25 red apples, 47 green apples, and three yellow apples. What's the minimum number of apples that Bobby has to pick to ensure that there are at least two apples of different colors? he should pick at least 48 apples. There's a slight chance he might pick up 47 green apples in a row. The Smiths are having a family dinner. A grandfather, a grandmother, two fathers, two mothers, one brother, two sisters, two sons, two daughters, one daughter-in-law, and one mother-in-law need to sit at a table. There are only seven chairs available in the room. How many more chairs do they have to borrow to sit down all together for the dinner if everyone requires a separate chair? They don't need additional chairs. There are only seven people. A grandfather married a grandmother. They have a son who has married a woman. Together, they have a son and two daughters. So there are only seven people at the dinner. What has to be broken before you can use it? Any ideas? An egg. Now Tyler runs an amusement park. He's having a job interview with these three clowns. But only one of them is not dangerous. Can you help Tyler hire the right person? The first clown doesn't cast a shadow, so he's probably a ghost. And the third clown is stealing money from the second clown's pocket, so he's a thief. Therefore, Tyler should hire the second clown. Peter and Holly are having their first date in the amusement park. They decide to ride the Tunnel of Love. At some point, it gets pretty dark inside the tunnel. And after the ride, Peter finds out that his wallet is gone. Tyler calls the police and questions three customers from nearby swan boats. 
Bella says, I'm sorry, I filmed the video on my phone. I didn't look around. Tim says, no way, bro. My wallet is gone too. And Lisa replies, in the dark, I felt someone touching my bag. I pushed the attacker away. Can you spot the thief? It's Holly. Take a look at her bag. There are two wallets inside it. And here's one more in her pocket. Tyler receives a curious delivery. It has streets, but no pavement. It has cities, but no buildings. It has forests, but no trees. Also, it has rivers, yet no water. Can you guess what it is? It's a map. There are three bakeries in the park. Wendy has exactly $100 and she needs to buy 100 cupcakes. She must spend the money entirely. Also, Wendy must buy at least one cupcake from each bakery. The first shop is selling each cupcake at 5 cents. The second one is selling them at $1 and the third at $5. How many cupcakes should Wendy buy from each bakery? To fit the budget, Wendy should buy 80 cupcakes from the first shop, 1 cupcake from the second shop, and 19 cupcakes from the third shop. Brian decides to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. On his way up, someone suddenly throws ice cream right in his face. When the trip is over, he interviews three suspects. Zoe says, I don't eat ice cream, I'm on a sugar-free diet. Peter says, I didn't see anything, bro. I'm terrified of heights, so I kept my eyes closed the whole ride. And Fred says, sorry, I was streaming a video, so I didn't look around. Who is lying? Peter. If he's terribly afraid of heights, why would he ride the Ferris wheel? Brian is wandering around the park. Suddenly, someone approaches him from the back and grabs his phone. The thief is wearing a mask, so Brian can't see his face. The thief runs into a cafe and hides among the customers. Can you help Brian spot the criminal? It's this woman. She's hiding Brian's wallet in the menu. Tyler is walking down the street after a long work day. Suddenly, he pushes this lady. Can you guess why? Tyler saved her from getting hit by a car. Tyler keeps on walking and sees a group of ducks crossing the road. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Sixteen. Tyler enters a jewelry shop where his girlfriend, Mary, works as a saleswoman. Unfortunately, he finds her unconscious on the floor. He calls doctors immediately. They figure out that Mary was poisoned. Tyler questions three witnesses. The cleaning lady says, I was cleaning silver jewelry in the storage room. The guard said, I was having a lunch break outdoors and talking with my friend. And the boss says, I had a business meeting in another part of the city. Can you help Tyler figure out who poisoned Mary? Take a look at the hint that Mary left on the wall. It literally says that the boss did it. A few days later, Mary gets better and decides to prank Tyler. She brings three similar boxes to his house. There are two delicious cheesecakes in two boxes, and the remaining box contains dog food. Let's spin the boxes back and forth. Can you find the prank box now? Ah. 
Aha, the second one. Tyler gets an urgent call from his assistant. Someone painted graffiti at a vegan restaurant in his park. Tyler interrogates three employees. The cleaner says, I had an urgent call from my mother, so I went outside the restaurant to the backyard. When I returned, the graffiti was already there. The waitress says, I was taking an order. Suddenly, I looked out the window and saw a person in a black hoodie. He dropped a paint can and ran away. And the cook says, I was wearing my earphones and frying chicken wings in the kitchen, so I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cook. It's a vegan restaurant. Why would he fry chicken wings? After getting exposed, the cook pushes Tyler away and escapes from the restaurant. Tyler follows him. The cook hides in a carnival tent. He puts on a costume to blend in with the crowd. Can you help Tyler find him? There he is! It was raining heavily outside. So his shoes got wet. Tyler is walking around the park and spots four weird details. Can you see them too? This teddy bear has three ears. There's no July 34. There's pink ice cream inside the chocolate ice cream box. And this old lady is carrying a crocodile in a stroller. There are three fortune tellers working in the amusement park. Zelda, Salma, and Freya. One of them is an imposter. Can you decide who? Selma has an earphone in her ear, which probably means that someone is helping her when she tells fate. Later that night, Tyler finds Zelda lying unconscious at her workplace. There's a weird note in her hand. Tyler calls the doctors and the police. He also finds out that Zelda had only five customers that night. Alex, Rick, Emma, Rose, and Zoe. Can you figure out who's guilty? Rose. There's a tricky hint hidden in this note. Q plus 1 is R, N plus 1 is O, R plus 1 is S, and D plus 1 is E. Tyler spends all morning in his office. Then he leaves it for a couple of hours to have lunch with Mary. When Tyler gets back, he finds out that someone had robbed him. How? These six items are missing. Tyler is checking out these clowns' makeup before their performance. Can you spot the odd one out? It's this guy. He's the only one who has eyebrows. What about these houses? Can you find the odd one out? Yup, it's this one. Tyler receives four new tents. Unfortunately, one of them has a slightly different design. Can you spot which one? The second tent doesn't belong here. Tyler wants to improve the scary tunnel. So he gathers all actors playing ghosts and monsters for a brief team building. But there are real monsters and ghosts among Tyler's employees. Can you spot them? This guy is too transparent for a human. He's a ghost. And huge claws cut through this guy's sneakers. So he's probably a werewolf. Tyler wins a cute teddy bear for Mary. 
they get distracted for a second and then see that the toy is gone. They look around and find three suspects. Can you guess who is a thief? Although this lady is holding a similar teddy bear, it still has a different bow. This guy is carrying a box, and judging by his posture, it's hard for him to carry it, so it's probably really filled with heavy stuff. And the third guy's guitar is outside the bag. Which means he can be hiding the teddy bear inside the guitar case. Tyler throws an epic party at the amusement park. All guests are treated to free food and drinks. In the middle of the party, all the guests begin to fall asleep right on the dance floor. The next day, doctors check all the food and drinks from the party, and everything is perfectly fine. Can you guess what happened here? These balloons were filled with sleeping gas. In the middle of the party, they burst and made the guests fall asleep. Look at these two people. Can you guess which one of them is just dressed up and is not a woman in reality? It's this one here, the one in the pink dress. Look closer. She's blonde, but has dark hair on her arms. Also, you can see some naturally dark hair slipping under the wig. Okay, let's try to find some more imposters. There are two pregnant women. Can you tell which one isn't really pregnant? It must be this one. She has a big belly, but her choice of high heels is very questionable. Look at these two. One of them is a mummy that escaped from ancient Egypt. Don't ask me how, it doesn't really matter. Just find the mummy. What's your choice? It's this one. Look at the ankle. There's a piece of bandage slipping out of the pants. Dira came to a hospital for an x-ray. Two doctors are ready to accept her, but one of them isn't a real doctor. Take a close look at them. Who's not a real doctor here? It's this man here. See, he looks nothing like the person in the photo on his badge. He must have stolen the uniform. Mrs. Cook left for a business trip and three of her daughters stayed at home by themselves. When Mrs. Cook returned the next day, she found her car crashed. Obviously, one of her daughters had taken it and had crashed it by accident, but none of the three took the blame. Sage said that she hadn't left the house. Leora said that her friend had picked her up for school that day. Amaya said that she had taken the bus. Who crashed the car? Look inside the car. There's a purse. If you were attentive, you could have noticed that the day Mrs. Cook left, Amaya had this purse. So it was her who had crashed the car. Naya woke up on a Saturday morning after a long and hard week. She was very hungry, so she decided to make herself breakfast. Naya had a dozen eggs. She broke three eggs, fried three, and ate three. How many eggs are left? There are nine eggs left. Naya broke, fried, and ate the exact same three eggs. Esme was walking through the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she found a witch's house. She walked in, pet a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was making a new potion and asked Esme to give her a plant from the shelf. Esme walked there, but there were five of them. Which one? she asked. Not the one right in the middle, and not the smallest one. Also, don't take the one that's next to the pink flower. So, 
Which one does she need? That's the one on the very left, then. Or the pink flower itself. But in that case, wouldn't the witch just say so? Probably. She seems satisfied, so Esma is going back home this time. Mova was in a local park and noticed a purse. Someone must have forgotten it, so she took it to Lost and Found. They accepted it and said they would give it back to the owner. At the end of the day, three women came in and demanded the purse back, each stating that the purse belonged to them. Take a look inside the purse and decide to whom it really belongs. Look, there's lipstick in the purse. There's just one woman who's wearing lipstick of the same color, and it's this one. So the purse must belong to her. Let's stick around in Lost and Found for a while. There are more things to give back to their owners, like this wallet, for example. There are three people claiming that it belongs to them, but which one is the real owner? Look, there's an ID card. It has a photo of this guy, so it must be his wallet. There's a backpack, and three people are demanding it. You can take a look inside. Who do you think the backpack belongs to? There's a jacket that matches this girl's trainers perfectly. It must belong to her. Can you pick the owner of this purse out of these three people? Look, there's a charm on the purse that says Ella. This girl in the middle has a necklace with a pendant saying Ella too. It must be her purse. Yvonne and Liana are exploring a forest right outside their town and find an abandoned hotel. Of course, they walk in to look around. When they walk into one of the rooms, a cage falls and traps them inside. There are three potions. Each of them will only last 10 minutes. If they drink the purple one, they will turn into the first animal they can see. If they drink the blue one, they'll be able to fly. If they drink the orange one, they'll switch bodies with each other. Which potion should they drink? Look, there's a little mouse in the room. If they drink the purple potion, they can turn into a mouse and will be small enough to escape through the cage. What they do afterward is another matter. Inez was studying in a boarding school. She often stayed in the library till late because, well, she didn't want to spend time with her roommates. One day, she found a dungeon. Of course, she walked in to see what was there. She found a pile of old books and a journal filled with weird symbols. Can you help her decode the name of the person this journal belongs to? For each letter, there's a unique border and dot combination. To decode, Inez just has to find the respective letter. If she does it right, she should get the name Marion. A group of friends were partying on a Friday night in a neighborhood. The next morning, Mr. Johnson came to his little shop and found that the glass door was broken. Nothing was stolen, but he reported to the police because he wanted the glass replaced. The police found fingerprints of three people on the bottle, Nova, Ayla, and Eamon. Which of the friends threw the bottle into the glass door? It was Eamon. His fingerprints are upside down and are located on the bottle's neck. This means that he wasn't holding the bottle to drink, but upside down to throw it. A group of cyborgs arrived on Earth to study humans' behavior. The police found out about it and got concerned. They want to track every cyborg and interrogate them. Let's help them find a couple of cyborgs in disguise. Look at these two people here. One of them isn't a human, but which one?
It's this guy with a tail. He wasn't careful enough to dress up properly. Here's another pair. They both seem pretty usual, but one of these women is a cyborg. Can you spot her? It must be this one. Her eye color is orange, which is not humanly possible. Look, there are two suspicious people in the grocery store. Oh no, there's just one cyborg. Which one? It's this one, the one with the cyborg's leg. Oops, he forgot to cover it up. Then the police moved on to different houses. One officer took a look at these two houses today. In which house does a cyborg live? Look, there's gasoline on the kitchen counters. It's definitely a cyborg's place of residence. You're doing great. Now, look at these two bathrooms. Can you spot anything suspicious and find the bathroom that doesn't belong to a real human? Look, there's a wrench instead of a toothbrush. I bet that's the one. A young actress, Chanel, was staying at a hotel in Miami. Suddenly, she screamed. Detective Callum was drinking a cocktail right by her balcony, so he walked in and asked her what had happened. The girl looked scared. A man dressed in black just broke into my room. I heard some scratches in the keyhole, and then he opened it and grabbed my hand. I screamed, and he ran away. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? The door of the room opens inwards, and it's loaded with boxes now. If someone had opened it and walked in, the boxes would have been pushed out of the way. Luna wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mother didn't let her go. Still, she felt bad, so she said, If you need to get out of your room for a while, you can go visit your grandparents at their geese farm for the weekend. Luna agreed. But she decided to trick her mom. Instead of going to her grandparents, Luna went to the party. When she got home, her mother asked her how the weekend had been. Luna replied that she had a great time, spent a lot of time in the garden, and was responsible for feeding the chickens every day. Her mom knew that she was lying. How? It wasn't a chicken farm, but a geese farm. If Luna had really been at the farm, she wouldn't have confused them.